Okay, we've got our next species for the vlog. This is the ornate flying snake or golden tree snake. One of the more common species to find around Southeast Asia, but in Singapore it's got a bit of a restricted distribution. Actually a very interesting species. Uh, it's one of three species of the genus you can find here in Singapore. And they all have some characteristic behaviors. Uh, the most striking of which is their ability to flatten their bodies out and jump off of tree branches and glide across to other branches. That's where they get their common name flying snakes. It's a behavior I've yet to observe, but I have seen them shoot off and jump low in the shrubs and things like that. So definitely a common behavioral characteristic. Uh, this is a juvenile, uh, pretty small. They get quite a lot bigger than this, but very little change in morphology and markings as they age. They all pretty much look like this. Uh, there can be some variation within species, some a bit more green, some a bit more yellow, but pretty similar in terms of pattern and, and markings. A really interesting species, really glad to be able to bring it to the vlog. And yeah, I think we're gonna keep going and we'll check back in when we get something else. All right, everyone, we have an absolute home run for the vlog. One of my halo lifer species and one of the most special and interesting snakes in the world, the blue coral snake, Calliophus bivigratus. This is one of Singapore's most impressive native species. And as you can see here, um, pretty obvious why it gets that title. They have incredible dark red heads, beautiful electric blue lateral scales, and looks like, I can't tell if that's the interstitial scaling on the dorsum or if that's the outline of the scales, but the blue comes through even on the black stripe on the back. And they even have a bright red venter, uh, which is the exact same color as the head and the tail, which is also bright red. So this is a very unique species in a lot of ways. Um, one of its most interesting characteristics is its venom gland. Um, many people watching may be familiar that um, snakes have venom glands usually located in what looks like their cheeks. It's uh, kind of the upper side of their jaws and the back behind the eyes. Uh, this snake's venom gland actually runs for the first third of its body. So even though it's a relatively small species in terms of diameter and head size, the amount of venom it can deliver, or at least that it holds in reserve, is pretty spectacular. Uh, as in a lappet, it's a fixed front fang snake, and the venom composition I'm not entirely sure on. I know there's neurotoxic components. I believe there's some cytotoxic components, but um, very, very interesting and impressive animal. Now it's going to move off here. You can see the bright red tail, and we'll just watch it go on its way. What a spectacular animal. Yeah, we're going to watch this one. Let's see if it moves off. And this is a little bit of an open area, so we'll follow it around and see if we can get some good shots. And uh, if necessary, some more video. Oh, here we go. The head is poking out of the side, having a good look at me. So this is exactly how you find them, moving through the leaf litter and hunting for other snakes. Another interesting fact about this species, which is not uncommon amongst terrestrial elapids. Uh, they're definitely snake eaters. They've been known to cannibalize, um, and they also hunt around for things like the pink-headed reed snake, which you've seen in previous videos, um, pretty much any other snake that they can overpower. So, real treat here, getting the chance to film this snake, and really, really happy to be able to bring it to the vlog. Okay, we've got our next snake of the evening, and this one is a blue bronzeback. So that'll make the third species of bronzeback we've seen since we've been in Singapore. And this species is actually quite interesting. They get their name from the coloration between the scales on the body here. It's actually a really bright blue, 
and you can see it when they're kind of fired up or nervous. A little bit difficult to tell now. I'll see if I can get us down here, kind of where it's bent. You can see kind of the edges of these scales are a really impressive cobalt blue. Um, aside from that, morphologically speaking, they're actually pretty similar to a lot of the other bronze backs. Um, I would say dimensions-wise, somewhere between um, painted bronze backs and elegant bronze backs. Uh, they also have a little bit more of a yellow-green venter, um, which is a bit more like the uh, elegant bronze back than the Pictus. But definitely a bronze back, pretty obvious there, and really interesting species. So great to be able to bring another one to the vlog. We're going to keep at it. We'll check back in if we come up with something else. All right, everyone, we're out on another walk and we've come across a common species here in Singapore, Ayatula persina. This is the Asian whip snake. As mentioned, definitely one of the more common species, but this one has some really beautiful coloration. It actually has a very light green, almost whitish color on the sides and then a bit of a lime green tone to the dorsum. So these are really interesting snakes. They're completely arboreal, spend their days hunting lizards in low shrubs and up in the treetops, and have a very, very specifically designed body. You can see here the head, really long and narrow, helps kind of change their profile when they're in the greenery and make it harder to see them and pick them out. Um, and uh, there may be some advantage in terms of how they're able to grip their prey as well. But they're actually a rear fanged, mildly venomous snake, not really dangerous to humans, but pretty effective on their prey. Small birds, lizards, things like that. And yeah, just a really great species. We do see a lot, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one, but wanted to make sure we had a chance to give you guys a look. And we're gonna keep going. We'll check back in if we get something else. All right, we've got our next snake of the night. And if I'm honest, it's actually more like our sixth or seventh snake of the night. We've gotten a bunch of whip snakes and painted bronze backs, but not much else just yet. Uh, but I wanted to share this one on the vlog because this is a juvenile oriental whip snake, Ayatula persina. And as you can see, the coloration is quite different from the mature variants or the mature individuals. Uh, the one we saw earlier had light coloration. I think this locality has a lot of lighter colored specimens. Uh, but this one, you can see, is kind of a tannish yellow on top and almost completely white on the laterals and the venter. So really, really interesting look. Really cool to see how they color change as they mature and something that I thought would be nice to share. So we're going to keep at it, and hopefully we're able to bring you some new and interesting species, but um, we're going to keep at it regardless, and we'll check in if we get something else. All right, we've got our next snake of the evening, and this is a pretty exciting one to be able to share. This is actually a dog tooth cat snake, it's Boiga cynodon. And it's a somewhat common species in Singapore, not one that you encounter too frequently, actually. Um, but really spectacular, very large species of boiga, uh, which is a genus of snakes that are categorized by their arboreal nature. Um, although often they're found wandering around on the ground as much, if not more so, than they are up in the trees. But regardless, it's quite obvious that they're built for trees. Um, and as I mentioned, this is actually quite a large specimen. I'm going to try and show you uh, my hand relative to, uh, I don't want to get it too close, but you can kind of see here. There's my hand. There's the snake. And I would say this one is probably pushing two meters. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit of variability in terms of the coloration and markings. This one's a little bit more what I would say um, standard, kind of the more common color and pattern to encounter, but there's also a melanistic um, population, and there's a population that's a little bit darker orange in color than this one. 
but really interesting species. They range throughout Southeast Asia. Um, and like I mentioned in Singapore, not that uncommon, but definitely not a regular encounter on the trails. So we're doing pretty well here. We're gonna keep at it. We'll definitely check back in if we find something else. And in the meantime, hope you've enjoyed the boiga. Okay, not a snake, but a feisty scorpion. I was about to say little, but it's actually not that little. Um, you can kind of see my hand for reference there. Not the biggest scorpion in the world, definitely not the smallest, but a cool little distraction. So we're gonna let this one get off the path here and keep on going, see if we can find some more snakes, but we'll stop if we find any cool critters like this too. <laughs>